Imagine a day in the life of Ken Barber. He's a DevOps engineer for a popular retail company. He and his team embrace DevOps and the service ownership operating model principles that empower practitioners to build it, ship it, and own it. PagerDuty Incident Response empowers Ken's team with full ownership over apps and services that support their company's retail product website. Ken's company embraces a breadth of capabilities within the PagerDuty Operations Cloud and its seamless integration with key AWS services. The company strives to keep their services up 24 by 7 across the world, and most importantly, to keep their customers happy with reliable access to products that consumers require to live well. Since the number of different systems in the modern digital landscape has exploded, Ken's team needs PagerDuty's digital operations platform because it flexibly integrates with any tech stack and breaks through silos so that our teams can work better together and provide customers with a better experience. Their website architecture and infrastructure resides in the cloud. So they've integrated PagerDuty with various AWS services, ranging from AWS and Amazon CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and Personal Health Dashboard, to Security Hub, GuardDuty, DevOps Guru, and more. Companies operating in the cloud monitor resources across AWS services like EC2, Lambda, Amazon DynamoDB, RDS, and it helps them spot trends and centralize monitoring across AWS implementations and custom metrics. Most common are CloudWatch alarms configurations like these on AWS services or custom app performance metrics. These threshold-based alarms serve as critical app and system health checks that help teams stay on top of the performance and availability of their apps and cloud infrastructure. When an alarm state changes to in alarm, it's configured to place an event in a standard type SNS topic and has a subscription that will post to a PagerDuty service. When a CloudWatch alarm is triggered, an event will be received in PagerDuty. As you can see, these are some examples of other types of incidents that are triggered in PagerDuty from just some of the AWS services that PagerDuty integrates with. Ken's team also leverages the PagerDuty process automation plugins, such as CloudWatch Logs, Systems Manager, and ECS Remote Command plugins to standardize and automate operational procedures and safely delegate them as self-service requests to other stakeholders. And now let the story begin. It's a workday evening and Ken is enjoying a delicious meal. He's the on-call primary responder for the night and in charge of keeping the product search service and other critical website related services up and running since so many customers rely on these services to effectively make their purchases. While he's on call, he's not actively thinking about work because he can rely on PagerDuty to let him know in the way that works best for him when anything urgent arises that should require his attention. As dessert finds its way to him at the dining table, Ken begins reaching out to grab a slice of chocolate souffle. But just as he does, his phone gives him a nudge. He takes a quick glance and immediately springs into action. Through the PagerDuty app for Amazon CloudWatch, a CloudWatch alarm is in alarm due to a failed health check detected in the ELB logs and has triggered this high priority notification in PagerDuty. Ken also has visibility into what else is currently happening across the company. It's possible that some customers could be encountering a 500 error about connection issues to some database. There's also another incident about an API call possibly made to modify a database that triggered a PagerDuty incident through the PagerDuty app for AWS CloudTrail. As a storm of alerts arrives, PagerDuty filters through the noise as multiple alerts are grouped together in real time through PagerDuty's machine learning based algorithm that groups related alerts into a single open incident. This helps Ken focus as he digs deeper into the details of the incident to understand what is happening. He quickly acknowledges the incident first so that everyone knows he's working on it. In this case, event orchestration processed the event payload, set the priority of the incident to a P1, and invoked automated diagnostics through PagerDuty's automation actions, as you can see here in the response notes. This P1 incident has an incident workflow built to quickly engage the major incident response team for an impending system outage. It automatically creates a Slack channel creates a Zoom conference bridge just in case members of Ken's department or stakeholders need to collaborate and communicate with one another, and engages additional responders and additional teams to join in on the investigation, while it also subscribes stakeholders so that they can stay up to date on the issue. 
Pager duty surfaces so much extra context for Ken just in the palm of his hands. He views details synced from the event payload here. Just a note, the CloudWatch alarm payload is truncated here for simplicity, but can often appear more verbose for technical responders to interpret. Augmented by machine learning and AI, PagerDuty quickly helps Ken decide where to look next. He proceeds to view that configuration changes were recently made, so there's some possibility that these changes may have caused the issue. He used to have to gather this information manually, but now he sees them here instantly without having to leave the platform. He also sees that there have been occurrences of this issue in the past, making it easier for his team to learn from previous occurrences such as who worked on and who was involved in the incident, what actions they took to resolve the issue, and the incident duration. Visible here are related incidents that are impacting other responders and services in his organization. There's a possibility that this incident that Miyoko, the database on-call person, is actively working on could be related to the one Ken is working on. Ken sends a quick status update to keep stakeholders and incident subscribers informed of only the relevant response activity that they need to know about. Ken hops on the web and decides to gain even further details about the incident through the PagerDuty web service. He views the service graph to understand the full blast radius of this issue and is able to zero in on the probable cause. It also helps facilitate cross-team collaboration. Ken dives back into the incident details of this issue he is working on. Through PagerDuty's machine learning, it is evident that this incident has not happened often before and it goes hand in hand with incidents that have occurred in the past via this heat map visualization. These are the same related incidents that you saw earlier on the mobile app. PagerDuty's machine learning algorithm and service dependency data gives him an at-a-glance view of the full breadth and scope of incident impact and supports what you saw earlier on the service graph, which is also accessible here. Ken proceeds to dig further. He runs a few more basic diagnostics to check disk space and gather uptime. These types of diagnostic commands used to be manual, repetitive, and even stressful to run in the middle of a critical incident, wasting seconds that do matter. But now they're fully automated and easily accessible at the click of a button. These actions could also have been executed through PagerDuty's event orchestration rules as well. Since having this extra diagnostic data is helpful both at the onset and during any point in time, as symptoms of an issue can be transient or verbose logs can be hard to parse. While the output is being generated, Ken quickly joins the Slack channel to let Miyoko know that his incident could be related and impacted by the one she is working on. He also explains that PagerDuty suggested that her incident might be the probable origin point of the failed ELB health checks. Miyoko also joins his incident based on the P1 incident workflow and starts reviewing the automated diagnostics. Miyoko needs more point in time diagnostics to help isolate the root cause from change events and the alerts. So she leverages PagerDuty process automation once more to execute a runbook job containing a full workflow of automated activity at the click of a button right within Slack to gather more information. She could have also done the same from her mobile phone and through various other integrations in areas of the PagerDuty product. PagerDuty runbook automation and plugins empower responders to run point-in-time automated diagnostics to generate critical information to help troubleshoot the issue. Normally, subject matter experts would have to find a runbook and log into various systems to understand the current state of a system, app, or service, but instead, now they can execute this faster than human scale at the click of a button through runbook actions and runbook automation at any moment in time, capturing critical data that isn't easily accessible due to its transient and verbose nature. While Ken and Miyoko are part of a team that practices DevOps in full ownership, as mentioned before, which helps companies modernize and operate more efficiently in the cloud, you can also imagine that these automated tasks could be easily delegated to level one and level two support to quickly diagnose or even remediate issues without having to engage other experts within the company, also bringing forth more operational efficiency. This would be prevalent, especially in an organization where IT is centralized with a network operations center and associated with a multi-layer or three-tiered support model. Miyoka reviews the output, discovers that a primary database got wedged, and after looking deeper, confirms that the impact is likely due to the recent AWS config changes she made through AWS code deploy. 
However, since she needs more time to reconfigure and retest her intended changes, she quickly describes the remediation plan and simply executes an automation action to revert to the last deploy to remediate the issue. She can spend more time identifying the root cause, tweaking her configurations, and implementing the right fix after the health checks for the ELB targets are back to normal again. After another round of diagnostics, Ken and Miyoko are thrilled to see that the database locks have been cleared up. Ken and Miyoko resolve their incidents and send out a final status update to keep their internal stakeholders informed. Following incident resolution, verbose runbook automation diagnostics results are critical for curating a comprehensive postmortem with relevant, critical information that facilitates continuous learning across the team. Miyoko decides that she will complete this in the morning after a good night's rest. As you just observed, the night carried on smoothly with minimal human effort and minimal disruption to the company and its valuable people. Ken proceeded to reach out for that slice of souffle once more smiled as he took a bite, and it was still hot. This is just one of many examples of how PagerDuty integrates with AWS to help teams be better prepared and cloud ready. Visit our PagerDuty and AWS solutions page to learn more, view our library of advanced demos, and let PagerDuty and AWS help accelerate your modernization journey in the cloud today. Be ready for anything in a world of digital everything.